I'm Michael Jetzgeide, and I'm the head of the research group Learning and Early Childhood at the Max Planck Institute for Human Cognitive and Brain Sciences in Leipzig, in Germany. And I've been studying dyslexia and dyscalculia for about more than a decade now. So what fascinates me about dyslexia and dyscalculia research uh, is that there are a number of apparent opposites. So for example, uh, reading and math difficulties affect high level cultural techniques, but at the same time, they can be traced back developmentally to very basic fundamental sensory capacities like speech perception, for example. Another striking observation is that each child who meets criteria for dyslexia and dyscalculia has a unique cognitive profile, so a unique fingerprint of individual risks and resources. Uh, still, uh, dyslexia and dyscalculia occur universally across all cultures studied so far. I think the question about causes and consequences of dyslexia and dyscalculia uh, can only be answered by longitudinal studies uh, beginning in early childhood, ideally already uh, in infancy. Uh, what we know from the few studies available so far is that children who go on to develop dyslexia have early difficulties in linking vision and speech and also fine-grained speech perception. Children with dyscalculia have early difficulties in making sense of numbers, be it uh, patterns of dots or number symbols. Um, but in any case, uh, dys dyslexia and dyscalculia both are multi-causal uh, in nature. Regarding the, the universality of dyslexia and dyscalculia, one could say that uh, each child with dyslexia for example, experiences difficulties in linking speech to text. And this is the case no ma matter whether kids learn uh, the English alphabet or Chinese logograms. Um, and every child with dyscalculia um, finds it difficult to understand and to handle numbers. So in this sense, there are uh, universal characteristics that are shared by virtually all children. But uh, there are also important differences that I would like to mention. And to give one example uh, in dyslexia, so dys dyslexia is diagnosed most often uh, in English speaking cultures, um, simply because their writing systems are the most inconsistent and intransparent uh, with respect to uh, print to speech conversion rules. Yeah. Uh, think of how many different pronunciations um, of the letter A, for example, there are in English. So there, uh, there's certainly a cultural unity, but also cultural diversity when it comes to dyslexia and dyscalculia. It's often overlooked that reading, writing, and recognizing numbers are so fundamental capacities that dyslexia and dyscalculia affect children in virtually all classes, and not just reading or, write, or, or math, and beyond educational uh, achievement, uh, such negative learning experiences uh, can have even have serious mental health consequences, even severe forms of anxiety or depression. So yes, definitely, dyslexia and dyscalculia have a large impact on children's lives outside of school uh, because letters and numbers are ever present. So now more than ever in our digital worlds, uh, imagine how exposed you are uh, when you post text that is full of spelling mistakes uh, on a social media platform. Uh, or imagine uh, you cannot place an order in the online shop because you are unable to so uh, solve a, a simple addition problem that is required uh, in a number capture. A substantial proportion of children who go on to develop uh, dyslexia already come to attention during language acquisition. So, for example, they might find it more difficult uh, to understand speech, uh, to build a vocabulary or use grammar correctly. And later they may be slow to say aloud a particular word corresponding to a picture in a picture book, or they may overhear rhymes um, when singing songs. 
Uh, children who go on to develop dyscalculia may be slower or they may be less efficient when playing puzzles or playing with blocks or with board games uh, in which they have to compare the numbers. Um, but none of these signs, I would say, are necessary or sufficient. So I consider a comprehensive, but at the same time, a sensitive early risk assessment as really important. So I think it's very important to support children um, who are at risk or affected by dyslexia or dyscalculia. But at the same time, I also consider it as very important to support all children individually um, who struggle during learning uh, in school and to provide them with individualized adaptive resources that helps them uh, to make the best out of their uh, potential and um, really be sensitive to their individual risks and resources. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you want to learn more about dyslexia and dyscalculia research, you can go to our lab website, skydalab.com and to Bold on bold.expert.